Buenos dias. Father Michael here. Yesterday, another hot, humid day, but I took a little road trip after mass and went up to see my son. <clears throat> had a nice visit, had a nice meal together, played cards, hung out, talked. It was a good day. And so it's now, you know, it's, it's after sunset and I've got a two hour drive to get back home. So I'm leaving his place <clears throat> and I'm headed through town uh, to get onto the highway to, to drive home. And at the spur of the moment, I thought, no, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on the highway. I'm going to go to Big Lots instead. <laughs> They're still open. They're open till nine. This is the same Big Lots, by the way, where Stefan and I have browsed and I've helped him buy Christmas gifts for uh, you know, his brother and mother and uh, his nephews and all of that. You know, we've been there probably a hundred times um, over the last decade or so. So in a certain sense, that particular Big Lots has some sentimental value to me. And, of course like any Big Lots, they usually have some amazing things that I just can't find anywhere else. So I go. And it's like, you know, you go in there thinking you're gonna get maybe one thing and before you know it, I've got like $50 worth of stuff in my cart and some foodstuffs that I can't find anywhere else, et cetera, et cetera. And so finally, I realize, um, you know, they only have like a half an hour before they close, so I, I better get my ass out of there. So I make my way to the checkout, and there's a Hispanic woman there, uh, a little older than myself, I think. Um, and I'm unloading my cart onto, uh, onto the counter there. And, and, and she says to me, you know, how are you doing this evening? And I said, I'm all right. How are you? And she took a big breath and she sighed. She said, well, to be honest, I'm just glad that today is almost over because I've been thinking about my son all day today. His name was Dominic and he died 11 years ago. And no one but me even remembers or says his name. Wow. And it was then that all of these years of Catholic education and ministry <laughs> became useful. And I said, well, of course you're thinking about him today. Today is his name day. Today is the Feast of St. Dominic. And she looked at me like I had just given her something amazing that she hadn't consciously remembered. And I said, like I usually do when I meet a parent who's lost a child, I understand. I understand. And I told her about my own son, Chris, who was gone over 24 years, who died at age 19 in a car crash on Highway 12. And her eyes got big and she said, 
I remember that accident. I remember, I remember, wasn't the picture of the car on the front page of the paper? And now I'm feeling some kind of way. I said, yeah, yeah, it was. She said, another boy died in that accident too, didn't he? And I said, yes, one of his best friends. I'm sorry, I said. And she said, I'm sorry, back. She told me a little bit more about her son who, who died at age 42, about his wife finding him dead in their bed in the morning. And she said, but you know, no one understands and no one else remembers. They keep telling me that time heals, but it does not. My heart will always hurt. And then I decided to live on the wild side and I decided to kick into my broken, probably illiterate Spanish. I'm sure my students will correct me when they see this. And I said something to the effect of nuestro amor por nuestros hijos vivirá para siempre, señora. Al igual que el amor de Dios por nosotros. Dios nunca olvida. Nunca. Trying to say the love we have for our sons will never die. Just like God's love for us. God never forgets. And she put her hand on mine at that point and she said, Si, si. Dios nunca olvida. God never forgets. In Psalm 136, verse 23, the text reads, God remembered us in our low estate because God's loving kindness is everlasting. God does not forget. I left that Big Lot store on the one hand, extremely sad for a woman named Sue who lost her son, but also some gratitude for having been in the right place at the right time. Because sometimes, this is what God is really good at, sometimes those little last minute decisions to take this route home or to stop into this place rather than that place, sometimes that straight up is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And as I wept in my car for probably the next half hour or so, processing that whole encounter, there are three things that I really came to understand. The first thing is I'm okay carrying this sorrow for the loss of two of my three sons. I'm okay with that because I have pretty broad shoulders and I'm strong, stronger than many other people. I'm okay with it. I, I, I'm okay with it. I, I can carry this. What I'm not okay with is having other mothers and other fathers carry it. I don't want anyone else to have to carry this. It was a realization. That's, that's what makes me sad. I, I, I don't cry for myself. I don't feel sorry for myself. My heart breaks for other parents. So that was my first insight. The second thing was, again, 
the importance of saying the name. Saying the name. This applies to all of us, I think. If we know someone who's lost a child or lost a spouse, someone that we also knew, don't be afraid to say the name. Say the name. We love to hear the name. We love to know that somebody in this universe remembers our son or our daughter or our spouse like we do. It's a precious gift to someone. It's not, it's not going to make them fall apart and lose their shit. It's going to give them a certain level of peace knowing that someone else remembers. And the third thing I learned Don't be afraid to go to big lots because they have some amazing things that you probably can't find anywhere else. Let's pray. Gracious God, God of love, God whose love is everlasting. Be with all of us today who have carried loss and have survived. Help us to find joy and strength in our history. Help us to find your presence in this moment. You are the one who understands. You are the one who remembers. You are the one who knows that time itself heals nothing. It is your healing touch, your grace, your power that makes everything endurable and sometimes amazing. As we go about our work today, Keep us mindful of those who have lost someone and help us as we are able to reach out to them. And if we knew the person they are mourning, give us the courage to say the name that we might be an instrument of your peace and your grace for those who grieve. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, who lives and works with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever, the God who never forgets.